Ah, bah, that wasn't much of a last stand. I kind of wanted so that uh, I kind of wanted it so that the um, Senate loyalists would have kind of fought down to uh, to the last man, but uh, no, they didn't do that unfortunately. But um, well, that's kind of them, really. All right. Well, now uh, now I guess we can kind of move forward with our um, plans of conquering Germania. So yeah, I mean the land was really odd. It's um. I think I was talking about this, uh, the the the, uh, the geography there, and yeah, the the place was uh, completely filled with forests, and there were no roads at all, and the people there, uh, the people there's the cities were were kind of odd in that it it would be uh, it would be like for us to just you know, just essentially go continuously camping. Um, very little supplies could go into the region because the Romans required the huge baggage trains, which would be just you know, convoys of carts, pretty much, of uh, equipment shipped to them. The rivers were were odd. Um, you did have some ma massive ones like uh, like the Rhine, and um, some of them that you, they could use, and they were they were actually extensively used to uh, to kind of move forward through Germania, but. Um, yeah, the main thing is that there was just so much uh, impediments, so many impediments on the uh, on the road to anything, pretty much. It was just really difficult to uh, to move through the area. Ready for further Men yearn to be remembered, to make a mark on the world and rival the gods. Only the strong achieve immortality. Uh, that is the Roman Civil War, I guess. The end of um, of that time frame. We hunger for battle. Now, getting all of our troops across here. Oh, yeah, uh, we can upgrade uh, the Praetorian Guard with some better weapons. Let's do that. Now, getting through here on the campaign map is uh, is fairly easy, but like in real life, making that track would have been uh, really, really rather difficult. Um, you don't think about it nowadays, um, you don't think about it a lot nowadays, but um, inside just, it was just continuously forests or swampland or uh, some sort of variation between wilderness uh, types right inside Germania. And what that did was that it was just a, it was kind of a dizzying experience in that there were, there were, oh my god, are these people really starting to siege me with that small force? Um, but it, it would be like this, um, it be um, yeah, it'd be just quite dizzying just seeing uh, so many um, forests, so many swamps um, all along your route. And um, bear in mind that the Romans did try to build up the infrastructure as they went. So when they uh, they went to one region, they try to um, build up there, build bridges, make roads and stuff, and all of that uh, just it really really slowed them down. Now at uh, at Tudelberg Forest, Tudelberg Forest was actually one of the um, the most thickest ones there, and um, the, now the trailer kind of the uh, the trailer for were not the trailer, but I think it was like the E3 demo for uh, Rome Total War Two. Um, the one that showed that battle, it it kind of shows it off as a. Uh, it kind of shows it off as a really wide area with uh well it was a valley with like a fairly small path in the middle but the path was clear uh there were no trees um just in the general center of the map and that wasn't really like it um the romans really depended on using their formations and in, with that battle right uh you could definitely like inside the games this battle you could uh you could definitely get your troops marched inside a good formation but uh in reality that that was um that place was actually really difficult to even remotely assemble a uh, a battle square uh, formation. They, what they did was uh, there were just so many like low hanging uh, bushes and low hanging trees and like bushes and just vegetation on the ground that they they could actually just tie uh, tie two trees up with uh, with some rope and create um, these like little tripwire things right and then uh, as they did that it would just just butcher the uh, the people over there. So let's see, the civil war is over and we can either get the Roman Empire. Or alternatively, we can do a republic. So let's see. Huh. You know what? I'm going for an empire. 
It doesn't really tell me what benefits it grants us. It looks like uh, the Roman Empire will do negative 10 upkeep costs and um, less corruption, so that's definitely cool. Do we get a second one as soon as we finish this meter? So yeah, that's definitely uh, kind of cool. Now inside this region, we do need to... Uh, do need to handle these uh, Ready for battle. rebels this fashion, so uh, we'll get rid of them just like that. They actually have a lot of war elephants down here. We should uh, we should definitely recruit some um, in a little bit. But now with our uh, Germania campaign, we uh, well we do want to just keep moving forward and keep pressing for the towns. At your command. The Venera guard, I think we'll we'll just push over here. And now inside this region, I'll try to bounce our troops Commander. forward by uh, by kind of marching them like that. I'd I'd actually really like to play a um, a siege bat or a ambush battle. None so what I think I'll do Commander. is that I'll just get our guys to blindly Receiving march forward. Settlement. And my reason for doing that is because I just want to play one of those uh, ambush battles, and I think you'll agree with me in that they are uh, they are pretty cool. These guys are actually a playable faction this way by. You have further orders. And our group moves battle. ever further. So what I kind of want to do here is uh, I want to reach this town. At once. I'll we'll get this force to just kind of march forward kind of blindly like that and I do believe we have a fleet here so I think I'll declare war on uh, whatever is Germanic faction is this is as well set up. and we will also come in here and uh, mess them up What I think the Romans actually Ready did inside orders. this area was that um, they set they had set up a uh, they had set up a perimeter on the Rhine to just kind of separate their lands Commander. with um, with the peoples' as lands over here, with the uh, the Germanic tribes' as lands over here, and then um, gradually as the uh, the rest of the empire became more and more stable in that uh, civil wars weren't uh, you know being brewed all the time. They were able to just make gradual pushes over um, and into the Rhine. The now these fort, now these, um, they, they essentially put up a series of fortresses along the Rhine, and these places, uh, they wouldn't necessarily be fortresses in the sense that they're, um, they're meant to keep people away. They were more or less uh, trade posts because the, uh, the people um, on the other side they didn't really have the same. Uh, well, they didn't Commander. have the same goods and stuff uh, as the Romans, that they actually wanted to trade quite a lot. Commander. So now, driving ever farther Make into the uh, into the breach, let's go and let's really see how far we can push this uh, campaign before we have to uh, stop. Finding shelter. Ooh, there is actually quite a big army over Forgive here. Forgive me, but I cannot. Um, actually, it looks like that is the full extent of uh, however much we can push right now. So we'll leave it off like that. Get the uh, the march Alpine Legion to actually feet. march over here. Now, the odd thing about the people over there was that uh, inside um, Germania was that um, the the reasons behind the Battle of Tudelberg Forest was uh, was just general discontent. The, there was a Gathering there was a cultural supplies. mismatch between the uh, the Romans and the people over there. Um, they they had a uh, Augustus, which was the emperor at the time. He was actually uh, one of the well, I think he was like he was like the best emperor at the time. He solved the uh, the Roman problem of having civil wars all the time. So um, during his reign, it was known as uh, oh. Well, it looks like we're going to have to fight the, this battle. But during this, or no, maybe not. I'd prefer it if uh, if we just went with uh, whatever this thing goes. I don't like the naval battles at all, so we're just going to auto resolve them. But during his time, uh, he was known as the uh, as a yeah. See, the uh, the AI just managed to just 
it, he just they just managed to go right through our zone of control. Um, yeah, I really don't know why that happens. I mean, we definitely uh, have some sort of zone of control here, but they managed to just go right past. Um, but anyhow, with uh, with the Battle of Tudelberg Forest, what happened was that yeah, there was a there was a cultural clash. Uh, Augustus was an emperor at the time, and he was uh, he was kind of known to the Roman people as uh, the bringer of peace, seeing as how he ended a series of Roman civil wars and revolts and just general public um, instability in his uh, his area. But outside of Rome, he was uh, he was more of a conqueror. He was more of a warlord type of people, because at the time the Roman military constantly constantly recruited people and the recruits would have been shipped off to foreign lands uh, you know far away from from the core of the Roman provinces which would be let's say Gaul and uh, well Italia Hispania and places like that were well not necessarily um, all of those places but um, but the yeah they would just ship people to essentially like the far reaches of the empire and uh, really go from there. So I think that includes uh, northern his um, northern Spain, uh, obviously Germania, some areas like in uh, in Syria, I think, and um, yeah places like that really. Shall we hack at each other until our enemies can gorge themselves on? Apparently there's a rebel rebellion brewing here. Should probably do that. Do something about that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We'll get our me to move back there. And our client state is actually doing quite a good job in here. Um, should probably solve this problem yes. right now. We'll get our uh, I'll get a fleet to attack. Spartan fleet, so we'll try to take over them just like that. And that will, yeah, that'll get rid of a little bit of their fleet right there. And then on the mainland here, what I can do is that I'll get our guys to go into regular stance. And from here, we can just auto resolve these fights. Driving ever farther into these lands, we're going to need um, some more of these people, some more of these uh, patricians now, I suppose. And, and these people are going to have to amp up uh, more conversion, I suppose. So, over here, actually, entire uh, stretch of buildings seems like they all need replacing, so I suppose we'll get on to uh, doing that. Completely recalling uh, the little Rome! villages over. Ooh, and we can actually give these guys uh, silver rated upgrades for their weapons. Or is it silver rated weapons? I think it's gold rated uh, weaponry. And silver shields. Okay, that'll be really useful. Ready for battle. Wipe them out! It's kind of odd how they have uh, really similar shields to us, these uh, Germanic factions. It's kind of cool. On the move. Ready at once. You have further orders? We hunger for battle. Now over here, I think I'll push... Uh one army up into this area and I'll get another army at your command to push into push men. over here we hunger for battle 
then I'll get our entire front to uh, to just kind of shift places over here. You know, I've yet to uh, I've yet to actually find anything that kind of greatly goes. Oh, here we go. Now we've uh, now we see one force. I think I'll actually assault this place just to uh, just to kind of see what the uh, the Germanic troops actually have. And um, yeah, let's check out their unit lists because they uh, they over like they didn't they didn't have a professional army either. They were like the um, the other factions, but they they did have a um, a system of like you know verbal oaths and stuff. So that was um, yeah, that was kind of that. And let's see, we'll deploy inside the snow, seeing as how I think it is appropriate for the time. And now let's go from, uh, let's actually come from this angle this time. It's a nice clear uh, way. Or no, we'll deploy here. So we have these, uh, oh, these aren't actually giant ballista. I thought these were giant ballista. And those ones, um, those ones are immobile, but they, uh, they can shoot for like forever. Um, so actually, I think I'll deploy our troops like this, and we'll move forward from here. Yeah, but uh, what the game doesn't simulate is that the the Germanic cities weren't like this. They weren't uh, they weren't actual cities. It was it was you know you'd have a couple of houses here, and you have a couple of houses over there. What the hell are these wolves, really? Um, but there was just small, really, really small, really, really isolated little townships uh, with different uh, owners. Um, as opposed to any sort of uh, central place, really. And with that said, the Romans, in um, in conjunction with the, the difficult terrain, they were uh, they they found it really difficult to to just kind of do any to to really do anything there because uh, obviously just there there was nothing to to center themselves upon, right? Um, what would you have is that you'd have like a, an idealistic uh, little uh, river community and then the noble's house would look like everyone else's. It'd be a, it might have been a smaller house actually. And it was just a really, it was a different place with a different culture and was, um, and yeah, the Romans had a lot of problems coming in here. For us, what we're going to do is that I want to uh, smash open their, their walls over here. I don't want to uh, break in. I actually want to kind of, yeah, I want to see if I can actually get our uh, calf to actually make a charge as soon as we destroy these locations. So that'll be uh, kind of cool to see. Really don't know what the pathfinding AI is doing here. Oh, there we go. One collapse. Or maybe not. It's starting to break. So with these uh, siege equipment, we can actually take control of it and slug around in there. Wow, that one's gonna go way over. I think what we can do is uh, put on explosive shot now and uh, really lay into them with some explosive fire as opposed to snowballs. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, that was actually a good wall collapse. Now these rounds will be, uh, yeah, these rounds will be much more deadly towards the, yeah. <laughs> That'll really destroy them. So that would have caused a breach in their lines, and now we can uh, we can get the troops Jupiter to move forward. And I think I'll actually uh, I think I'll get the armored legionnaires to move forward. So I'm not. Uh, so let's open up the troops uh, panel here because I don't believe I've done this already. Um, let's take a look at the different types of uh, people over here. So we have armored legionnaires now, and these are just legionnaires with heavy armor. So they have that 94 uh, armored le um, armored value. So they're definitely strong in uh, taking projectile fire then we have the eagle cohort which are uh, which I kind of would assume would be troops that have uh, really high morale but uh, they actually have they they're pretty much just standard troops 
Um, the Eagle Cohort would have been the uh, the platoon that is, or yeah, they would have been the uh, the group, the company, I suppose, that held the uh, the Golden Eagle of the Legion. And I've yeah, I've already talked about these already. They they're fairly pro fairly uh, 